Right. Good afternoon again, and many thanks for joining us right here on MX24 Television. Uh, this is Opposing Views. My name is Kwabna Chenche Inibuati, and today we bring to you that very controversial issue, uh, which has been revived following the proposal of a new bill uh, to some way, somehow, criminalize activities of persons who identify as LGBTQI+. And so today, um, there's a lot to take you through, though. But if you do recall, some time uh, last week or the week before, the Speaker of Parliament, uh, together with the session with a few people, made some pronouncements, and it's on the back of that that all of these conversations are happening. So I want to start with that. But before that, let me quickly introduce uh, my guest for today's show. Uh, today, we're going to be joined by quite uh, a number of uh, high-profile personalities, also interested parties to what we are going to discuss. Um, Francis Xavier Sosu is a member of Parliament for Medina. He's also a human rights lawyer. Uh, he'll be joining us in a short while. Reverend uh, Dr. Kwabno Punifrimpong, uh, he's the executive director for the Alliance for Christian Advocacy Africa. Ras Mubarak is member of parliament, former member of parliament for Kumbungu. Uh, he will also join us uh, in a short while. Rosalind Mould, a board member for the LGBTQ plus rights Ghana. Uh, and then uh, he's also a, human, uh, a humanist. Uh, also one of the Kubolo, an advocate for LGBTQ plus rights in Ghana. Uh, he's currently out of Q Plus Rights Ghana. He is also joining in our conversation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and many thanks for joining us for this all important show right here on MX24 television. Right. Okay, so now that you've seen our guests, um, uh, let me bring back to you that very sound clip of the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Suma Nabagbin, uh, on the need for such a bill. And um, he made some comments which many have suggested were unfortunate well he's had the backing of some other groups also to suggest that this is a christian country and so such things should not be allowed like i said the addition of whatever he may have said from uh, samonate george the member of parliament for ningo pram pram let's take a listen to him rather quickly also and then we get one more comment and then we take you through a bits and pieces of the bill what the bill seeks to do the proposed bill and then we get our reactions and delve into the conversation. Mind you, this conversation is live now on television and on all our digital platforms. Uh, so you could share the links if you visit the MX24 page on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. There are links there that you can share to as many WhatsApp groups as possible so that a number of our colleagues can also uh, join in the conversation and share their views as need be. Let's now take a listen to uh, Ningo Prampa Member of Parliament, Samuel Nate George. It's extremely detailed. One of the very fine things in there that, that frowns on our customs and our religious beliefs. We believe that we will be safe in your hands as you stare the house to get us this bill passed into law before the end of this meeting of parliament. Um, that was someone out of George, member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram also, articulating his views there and giving us a gist of even what the proposed bill seeks to achieve. In fact, he says, among other things, that the bill will even prevent persons who identify as LGBTQ plus from adopting children even. I don't know how that works, though, because I'm LGBTQ, so what? I can't adopt a child? Well, but we'll go into that conversation in a short while. Uh, let's hear from um, a member of the Pentecostal Council as well, uh, Reverend Opokunina. Uh, he's also been sharing some views on this. We'll take those views and then uh, we'll delve into the conversation. Sometimes I consider some of the things that are going on as glorified foolishness. You know, foolishness that has been glorified. Because you know that if you take the LGBTI agenda in, into consideration, some of the things you cannot just think about it. Some time ago, people couldn't have come publicly to say this thing. It was an abomination. But we have tolerated this thing to the point that we have glorified it. But it's glorified foolishness. We, if you sit down, it's going to affect the whole humanity. And if we say that the colonial masters captured us and enslaved us, what good can also come out of us for them? So this is the time that God is calling Christianity, Muslims, concerned people, people who believe in the almighty God, to come around and do something for him 
to be their brother's keeper. Otherwise, all of us are going to destroy ourselves. So if the question is thrown to you about one another. Okay. Um, glorified foolishness. That's what he chooses to call it. Um, I'm sure our friends will have a, a lot to say about that. In, by my friends, I would say one love, the Kobolo. Uh, I think he's going to be our first person to comment on, on this. I'm going to take brief comments from each and every one of us on the line right now. And then uh, from there, we can look into the, the possible merits and demerits of this proposed bill. But one of uh, general comments so far about the bill and about the commentary that has gone on since uh, it was announced. Right. One of let's hear you. He's now back. Right. We are on. Yes, I can hear you. One You've been muted for the past five minutes. We haven't heard any single thing. We're oh. just hearing you now. Oh, yes. sincere the apologies. Microphone. Sincere apologies. Okay. So we, we did play a number of uh, uh, sound clips. Uh, Which was not necessary because all Ghanaians have seen that and it's just further spreading their hateful rhetoric. But right. continue. So, so, <laughs> so we'll take, we'll, the first thing is to try and uh, understand your view on this bill, this proposed bill, uh, and then the several commentary that has been run on the back of it. Okay, so first of all, we have to understand the source of this bill. Mm -hmm. this, this bill and all its literature is designed by the world, what are they called? Uh, if Alex can help me, the World Congress. The World Congress of Families. Yeah, the World Congress of Family, which is a white, racist, homophobic, Christian group in America, which has been limited in their operations in the United States. So I've started exporting this homophobia and hate agenda throughout Africa and other parts of the world. Mm. So they are the ones who are sponsoring and supporting FOH Amwanin's group and supporting these eight MPs, I'm sure, financially. So they have to let us know, like um, Sam George said, he has gone around eight town hall meetings or more talking to people about it. How is this being sponsored, this movement that he's making? Mm. So people talking about homosexuality being foreign influence, which is totally wrong. Please, one of the Kobolo, you have spelt it. There's an extra R there, the one in the middle. The R, right, there, right, take it right. Out. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. So, um, this people, like the whole rhetoric from homophobes saying that it's a foreign influence, is a lie. LGBT people have been in Africa and around the world before white people came to Ghana. Mm. They were the ones, or to the area down, now called Ghana, they were the ones who made homosexuality illegal because they were exposed only to a binary existence and their religion. So they are talking about foreign influence, but they do not know that homophobia is the foreign influence. And now the people supporting FOH Amwanin and these MPs, behind them is this World Congress people, which are also foreigners and are being banned from several countries for using hate and homophobia okay. to push the agenda. Well, well, let me ask this though. Uh, have mm -hmm. you seen the bill at all, the proposed bill? Have you read bits and pieces of it? And what yes, are your thoughts I, on it? I have. My thoughts on it. Okay, so first of all, they talk about... I want, I want us Ghanaians to know that this bill affects all of us, whether you are heterosexual, whatever you identify as. This bill can be used against you in its current form, in its current standing. Mm. Um, you are not allowed to use sex toys. You are not allowed to watch certain pornography that involves three sets and so on and so forth. You are not allowed to do heterosexual doggy styles. There's so many things in there which will affect everybody, not LGBTQ people only. And I want to know how the government is going to make sure these sexual practices are not happening. Are they going to put cameras in everybody's bedroom? Is this what we want as Ghanaians? For them to monitor every aspect of our life. How, right now, we all know that, I mean, some of us, but I know personally, sometimes police are plant marijuana on some people and pretend like it was on them to collect bribe. What is going to stop a corrupt police person from just 
telling somebody they are gay or they've caught them kissing another person, so they're arresting them. Well, how would they prove that this is true or not? So this bill is very dangerous for the average Ghanaian, and it needs to be scrapped, not changed in some other form or anything. Right. We need to put it aside and deal with the corruption going on. The flying showers, the 70% increase in salary, the COVID money wasted by the health minister, those are where we need to focus. The government mm. is using this LGBT thing to distract us from what all the bad things they are doing. Okay. One of thank you for those uh, opening remarks there. That was one of the Kobolo giving us his uh, opening comments on that proposed bill. Let's hear now from Rosalind. Rosalind Mode is the board, uh, she's a board member for the LGBTQ plus rights Ghana. Uh, Humanist International. Rosalind, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm first seeking your general impressions you. of uh, the bill as has been proposed uh, and then also the commentary that has come on the back of that bill. In fact, we've had uh, a member of the Pentecost Church, a leader of the Pentecost Church, describe the act of homosexuality as glorified foolishness and how Ghanaians should not even tolerate it any longer. Yes, thank you for this opportunity. Right. Honestly, I don't know how else to put it, but uh, anything of hate is just what it is. Mm. Let's just say it as what it is. It's, it's hateful. It is inhumane. It is um, all these bigoted statements. The entire bill is full of fallacious statements, emotional stuff, not based on any form of scientific evidence. Total, it, 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 it is total nonsense. That is where it's coming from. Mm. A lot of it is just um, coming from that rhetoric of Ghana is a Christian nation. Ghana is not a Christian nation. Ghana mm. is not a Muslim nation. Ghana is not a traditional nation. Ghana is a, sec uh, is a secular country. Mm. And everyone of different and uh, various beliefs and who have their rights to their beliefs are in this country. You cannot take somebody's doctrine or their, their uh, supposed deities um, mentioning to govern a whole country when not everyone believes in, in these things. Um, at the end of the day, we need to start really focusing on the separation of church and state. A mm. lot of these fallacious statements don't come from anything scientific. And I'm hoping that the Ghana Science Association comes up to give a statement about these things. The mention of it being um, of, of a mental illness. First of all, the WHO, who we are looking up to to help deal with this COVID situation that we are going through, is the same body the same international body, which has um, stated in 1990, way back, that they have removed it as a, 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 from the list of mental illness. It is not a mental illness to be a lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transsexual person. Mm. I don't know how many times they state that. Um, the fact that they want to clamp down on all activists, whether you are a heterosexual ally or not, um, it, this is like my brother said, if this is not about just LGBT people or the allies, it's yeah. about every Ghanaian, not only what he mentioned, but the bill is basically going to criminalize even fashion sense. So if um, you are a lady and you are wearing trousers or a, a, a tie, you could be arrested because somebody suspects you of being lesbian or um, bisexual. Yeah. Um, if you are a man, you are wearing skinny tights, or you are wearing an earring, you could, or anything that is supposed to be the stereotypical ways of fashion of a gay person, right. then you are also going to have to face that. And these are so many issues. I think that it's definitely a misplaced priority because there are so many more um, serious issues that are going on in this country, especially mm. during a pandem pandemic. We should be focusing on rather than this is a complete distraction from from the issues. Okay. And I don't know where this is coming from. Um, I mean, the World Congress of Families is a hate group. It has been banned in so many countries. They have tried so many times to appeal um, certain laws, even in the U.S., in New York, and they failed. They feel badly, and they have been trying to promote and export this heat under the cover of Christianity and love. There's nothing loving about homophobia. It is a hate uh, agenda, mm. and we, we should discard of everything about this bill. It should okay. definitely be better. All right, that's fine, Rosalind. Um, thank you. Let me hear from Alex now. Um, Alex Kofidonko is uh, the, uh, the director for LGBTQ Plus Rights Ghana. Uh, you remember him because uh, he was in the news uh, for quite some time. 
uh, after he was arrested, um, he was sought after by national security and the like. His office that was set up to be a safe space for anybody who felt intimidated by uh, persons over their sexuality. That place was shut down and he came under a lot of attacks subsequently. Uh, Alex, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us and it's good to see you once again. Um, we are talking about the proposed bill, which I hope you've perhaps had some time to uh, look over. Uh, what are your general impressions of that bill? We'll delve into it in detail in a brief while, but I just need to know your general thoughts about it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let me correct this. I, I wasn't arrested. Ah, they so didn't arrest you. Okay. It, I, would want to, okay. I would want to correct But, but you were being sought but, after. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, what I would say is that this bill, um, simply put, is horrifying and one that will subject a country like Ghana that is constantly striving mm. to be open, diverse, and also the upholding of our democracy and the belief of tolerance and diversity sets back. And honestly, every Ghanaian should be appalled that some Western country in the 21st century can influence our society. And if I say our society, I mean some leaders mm. to introduce a bill that, dis that divides us as a society and discriminates against other citizens because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity or their expression in terms of uh, uh, um, their way of dressing mm. or even their speech as in what they, they, they support. Or we'll get some more views from our guests in a short while, but let's go now to the document which highlights most of the things the bill captures. And I think it's in a, we have, we've summarized it in about five to 10 slides and we're going to share it with you now and take you through. So uh, if the first slide is ready, we'll put it up right now and uh, take you through it. So you begin to uh, understand where the concerns are coming from. Now, this is the very first one uh, as has been put up. The object of the bill is to provide for proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values, prescribe LGBTQ plus unrelated activities, prescribe propaganda of, advocacy for, or promotion of LGBTQQIAAP plus unrelated activities, provide for the protection of and support for children, persons who are victims or accused of LGBTQQIAAP plus and related activities and other persons and related matters. Okay, that's on the first page of that very uh, memo. If you go to uh, page 19, it also talks about this. Now, according to Article 1 of the proposed bill, this act applies to a person A, who holds out as a lesbian, a gay, a bisexual, a transgender, a transsexual, a queer, an ally, a pansexual, or a person of any other sociocultural notion of sex or sexual relationship that is contrary to the sociocultural notions of male and female or the relationship between males and females. There's a continuation on the next slide. Now, questioning that's this B now, questioning the sexuality of that person. C, who has a biological anomaly including a person who is intersex. D, involved in the promotion of, propagation of, advocacy for, support or funding of LGBTQIAAP+. E, who provides or participates in the provision of sex or gender reassignment, surgical procedure or any other procedure intended to create a sexual category other than the sexual category of a person assigned at birth, except where the procedure is intended to correct a biological anomaly 
including intersex, or F. Any person who engages in a sexual activity prohibited under this act. Okay. Then it goes on to say, Article 6 of the bill criminalizes sexual intercourse between same sex, human and animals, and pansexuals, among others, and describes sexual intercourse as where A. Now, this is very important, so pay attention to this. A. A person penetrates the anus or mouth of another person with the penis of that person or other contraption. Or B. A person, by use of any object or contraption, penetrates or stimulates the vagina or anus of another person. Or C. A person, by use of a penis or any other object or contraption, penetrates the anus or other bodily opening of an animal for sexual gratification. Now, if you take a look at A and B, what it suggests is that for a number of you who may be interested in using sex toys to enhance your sexual experience, be it uh, male to male or male to female or female to female, regardless, that is a crime. Okay. Now, it goes on to say that a person who engages in or participates in an activity that promotes or supports a. Sympathy for an act prohibited under this act or B. A change of public opinion towards an act prohibited under this act commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than five years and not more than ten years. So if you even happen to be a sympathizer of a person who for some reason falls foul of this particular law, well, <laughs> you too, you are in trouble. And that is what this proposed bill is saying. Let's go on uh, with a few more things the bill is suggesting. It says, per Article 7, a person who, A, through media, technological platform, technological account, or any other uh, means, produces, procures, markets, broadcasts, disseminates, publishes, or, or distributes, or uses an electronic device, the internet, internet service, a film, or any other device capable of electronic storage or transmission to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish, or distribute a material for purposes of promoting an activity prohibited under this act commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than five years and not more than ten years. So, for those of you even watching this show right now, and for me hosting this show right now, depending on how it is interpreted, if someone is able to convince a jury or a judge that the show was done in a way to promote or advance the cause of LGBTQI plus persons, myself, I can even be in jail. That is what the bill is proposing. Okay, let's move on. The bill also talks about a few other things. Now, section 15 of the proposed bill states that any group, society, association, club, or organization in existence before the coming into force of this act whose purpose, whether partly, overtly, or covertly, is to promote, facilitate, support, or sustain in any way an act prohibited under this act is disbanded. So, it's not just vigilantes, we are disbanded. We are disbanded. Now, uh, if you are a group that was set up prior to the uh, enactment of this particular bill, which they hope will become law, well, uh, that group must be disbanded. And if you engage in any such act which will promote the group, you may be found culpable, may be put in jail for between, say, five years and ten years or so. Okay. I think we'll wrap up in a short while. Let's take a look at uh, two other slides. I think we have a few more slides. Or oh, that should be about it. Okay, there's one more here. So, so section 17 of the bill, this is what it's talking about. It says a person who upon arrest during police investigation or at any time during incarceration for the commission of an offense under this act recants and makes a voluntary request to access an approved medical help or an approved medical treatment shall be uh, granted access to the approved medical help or approved medical treatment. The cost for unapproved medical help or medical treatment under subsection 1 shall be borne by the person or any other person, including an uh, approved service provider, including an approved service provider on behalf of the person. So uh, this is where the argument of uh, the mental health comes in. So if the argument comes then that you are arrested and you say that, well, um, if you are diagnosing me of any such illness in court, that you say I'm unwell, for which reason I prescribe as uh, gay or lesbian or whatever, and so you are taking me to the hospital to give me treatment, I will have to pay for that treatment out of my own pocket even. 
That is what the bill is suggesting. Uh, let's wrap up with that and move on to the next slide, uh, which also talks about Section 23. And this is what it's suggesting. It says the ministry shall liaise with an approved service provider to provide assistance, A, in the form of therapy or any other assistance relevant to the circumstance, to a person who may be questioning the sexuality of that person or for a parent whose child is intersex, in order to, where necessary, assist the parent to realign the child to the appropriate binary designation as determined by a medical practitioner. Interesting. So, um, this is a fair idea of what that bill seeks to do. And so, for those of you who may not have seen, read, or even heard anything about it, this essentially is a summary of the proposed bill. And you have heard from our colleagues uh, one of the Kobolo has said quite a lot. Uh, we've heard from Alex also who has said uh, quite a lot. And then uh, Roslyn has also suggested that, listen, there are better things to be focusing our attentions on and not an LGBTQ plus law at this particular point in time. Okay. Uh, before our other colleagues join us, I will have to play the devil's advocate because it appears as though um, it's, it's getting one-sided. So I would have to do that. So let, let me come to Alex. Alex. Um, so we've suggested, among other things, that in the expression of our rights, uh, people should not in any way put in place impediments or roadblocks in whichever way, shape, or form, including the law. But some will also say, in fact, the law suggests itself that the exercise of your rights ends where that of another person begins. So in such an instance, how do we draw the line? Could it be the case that in our bid to get our fair share of the cake to suggest that, listen, do you, you say you want to be you, you say you want to be heterosexual, that's you. I am me, I want to be whatever, so please, allow me. But could it be the case, is it possible that we may be in one way or the other infringing on the rights of others, for which reason perhaps clarity of the law has been sought for, uh, one of the reasons why uh, Parliament is coming up with this? Well, if that's the analogy in which we want to go, then I would rather draw your attention to the fact that in this country, LGBT persons are going through constant discrimination, mm -hmm. violence, and then abuse. So if indeed that is what we want to go by, then I think we should be rather looking at laws that rather protect LGBTQ persons from the abuses that go on on a daily basis. Mm. And I'm saying this because even as of 2018, Human Rights Watch documented in detail the abuses that LGBTQ persons go through. Up to now, no government agency, no uh, 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 MP, no one, none of nobody has even taken a look or shown any form of interest to want to solve these discrimination or these abuses that we go through. Mm. So, and then we are also seeing that we are a country that upholds the dignity of each, each citizens, all manner of its citizens. So why are other citizens being discriminated against on daily basis and then the citizens equally screaming and talking about the fact that we are being discriminated against, yet we think that rather putting in place more strict measures or strict laws is what is going to solve anything. Rather, mm -hmm. we are giving more legitimacy to other citizens to continuously abuse and continuously discriminate against it, uh, 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 LGBTQ persons and people who express Alex, their, their, the law their, is, the law is quite identity explicit on this. Now, the law does not in any way condone abuse of any sort, regardless of who is involved, be it physical or verbal, the law does not condone it. And so if you identify as, as, a, uh, as LGBTQ+, and you are abused for any reason, the law does not prevent any authority, any state apparatus from investigating the issue and bringing the perpetrators to book. So there but are cases going disconnect on, there. Right? Yeah, but it is going on, right? So we have even within our law that it, no form of uh, discrimination should be leveled against any citizens, yet LGBTQ persons are constantly and continuously being discriminated against. So you realize that even the existing laws are not being implemented. And honestly, some of these discrimination are actually being perpetrated from even some state institutions that has been given mandate to protect every citizen. Mm. Like sometimes even coming from the police, 
right? So an example is right. the is the arrest of the whole twenty one, mm. right? That some people were in spaces going through a training workshop, training workshop that every Ghanaian go through on daily basis. Yet some people go through training workshop and then they are arrested and then put behind bars for twenty two days for no substantive reason. Mm. These are the forms of discrimination that we are talking about. That even some state institutions are complicit in the discrimination that LGBTQ persons go through so, in this country. So the the state, so the setup itself is discriminatory to persons yes. who are LGBTQI plus. Exactly, because LGBTQ mm. persons are always the scapegoat in this country. In every situation, we are always the scapegoat, but, but, and that is why even laws. This, 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 this divisive laws that is coming from the West, they are targeting LGBTQ persons because they know that if they target LGBTQ persons, it can easily sail through and then it will be passed. And then it will also be the, the, the recipe for other laws to be introduced into the country. But if, 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 the laws, if, if the laws or the apparatus is set up against such persons, uh, why would we not rather focus, yourself included, uh, why would we not focus our attention on ensuring that the right things are done is it necessarily about fighting for additional rights or is it about fighting for the enforcement of the existing rights if you listen to the conversations that activists and advocates have been saying all this while you will realize that our conversation all throughout and all this while has been that lgbtq persons are continuously and constantly being violated in this country and so we should look at protecting all citizens of this country there is nowhere that we stand to even say that we should give legitimacy to lgbt marriage whatsoever to which the president said the last and that hasn't been our narrative if you listen to us all this while we are saying that we are being abused on daily basis how about we look at it and then solve it as a society such that some people do not think it is okay to discriminate and violate lgbtq persons mm. okay uh, thank you let me hear from one love now one love so there's this argument now uh, because a number of uh, persons who identify as lgbtq plus uh, have suggested that uh, it's a rights issue you must not uh, stop my right or prevent me from exercising my rights to be whoever I want to be and to do whatever I want to do. Uh, but the argument has been that, no, it is not a rights issue, it's a preference issue. Um, how do we deal with that, particularly in the context of existing law and also in the context of this new proposed law? Well, the government has to take a humane and responsible stance to educate itself and educate the people of Ghana mm. that... Uh, being homosexual, being queer is not a preference. People are born that way. And also sexuality is a personal issue. So whatever people are doing inside their rooms is up to them. Nobody is asking for the right to be having sex outside in public. And so, and no, so be, just based on that, it has to come from the government and agencies supported by the government to educate us all as Ghanaians about what queer queerness is mm. and how it is not affecting us in any economical way so that we can set that aside, live harmoniously and start focusing on the real problems like children sitting in classrooms with holes in the roofs and potholes full of water on the ground. Those are the things we need to be focusing on. Women giving birth on the floor in hospitals. We need to be focusing on, you know, health, good education, roads. These are the things we need to be focusing on that help us all as Ghanaians. Putting LGBTQ people in jail is not going to help anybody. And all of us in the end are going to end up in jail because hate is never satisfied. Once you start, you eat small hate on somebody, you'll be sitting there and think of what are the next group of people you want to hate and mm. do something too and soon all of us will be in jail the whole ghana will be in jail and just some few rich people will be sitting outside okay um i hear you loud and clear uh, and they, they, the point where you make about everybody going to jail i think resonates quite well with a number of people on social media because i'm seeing comments about how 
uh, people are saying, hey, blowjob and all are part of it and the like. So we'll come to your comments on social media also in a short while and how the new law seeks to criminalize such acts also. Um, but I, I would like to say something to one of the points on the bill, which is very crazy. Right. There's an extradition section. Extradition is when you, are, you commit yeah. a crime and run to a different, a different country, country you'll be and extradited they're able back to, to the pull country. you back. So yeah. They want to also use this with all the countries they have extradition agreements with, with to also um, bring back people that are guilty of maybe going contrary to this bill that they want to pass. What is the danger in that? If somebody has fled the country for political reasons, for religious persecution, for life endangerment of some other sort, now somebody who wants to bring them back so that they can deal with them can now falsify gay, a gay situation around this person and use that to pull this person back. Oh, so but, but they would have still, to justify that. So it, it, it's of not course, but stone. How do you justify this? You see, that's the thing. When, we, when you say that, now let's look at how do you justify mm. that somebody is having this anal sex or blow job or using sex toys or watching um, OG pornography movies. How do you justify this? I mean, this? in my view, you... till the person openly comes out to suggest A, B, or C, or perhaps commit such an act in the open, it may be very difficult to. Yes, but is it, and so what is the use for this bill if that is not happening? Because nobody has been having public sex for them to bring this bill. This bill is just about getting more control on human lives. And the only way they can enforce it Otherwise, it's useless, and they should throw it away. Because but, the only don't way you they think? Can don't you think it's it's really about um, uh, cutting down on the issue of advocacy for some of these groups and the things they've been saying all of this while? Don't you think that's what the bill actually seeks to do? Because, like you said, nobody really goes out in the open to do any of these sexual acts. Yes, and and this advocacy you are speaking of is just the LGBT community and other marginalized groups asking for equal rights in the society is not asking to be able to have public sex they're not asking for that but then that is where that, but then that is where the issue is the issue of the rights what mm -hmm. rights do you seek because nobody is curtailing on anybody's rights uh, based on the law so alex made mention of the abuse and i said the law is very specific on abuse and it, it doesn't have preference for somebody who is heterosexual or another person who is homosexual it's the law. It says anybody who is abused, whether verbally or physically, can take A, B, C steps. The law can do X, Y, Z. That is there. And so what rights are you yes. actually seeking? Uh -huh. But so what we are seeing in that, and I'm sure, I, I hope Alex can come and add to that. For mm. example, if somebody is trying to get a place to rent mm -hmm. and the landlord is homophobic and sees that this person has gay, it's effeminate or they suspect they are a queer, a queer person mm -hmm. they can deny them based on that and then but, but, but that's discriminatory they, and again the law makes provision for discrimination yeah, but you see uh -huh. that is where it comes into place that when they now go because majority of the society is not being hasn't been, advo hasn't been um, educated which is part of the advocacy we are asking for mm. to know how to be accepting and empathetic to all sorts of people, all walks from all walks of life, because this is not part of our cultural fabric at the moment, mm. people are being denied seats in the trotro, rent, jobs, to enter public spaces because of their perceived sexuality. Mm. So this is what the advocacy is for, that um, queer people are not having the equal rights that you are saying. It's there on paper. But it's not there in our activity. It's I not see. there in real life. Okay. Look at what the police did to the whole 21. Until today, the whole 21 are still going all the way to whole from different parts of Ghana to court for their case to be postponed again, again, again. This is serious abuse. Okay. Rosalind, um, so um, uh, I've been speaking to one love about this particular issue of rights, and uh, he cites a number of instances of discrimination and the like. Um, my argument is that the, uh, the law, as exists, makes provision for all of these things. And so, if it's our inability to enforce the law, let us tackle that. Let us not say that we should give additional rights to persons who identify as LGBTQ+. At another time, there may be another group, BBCCD, suggesting that, well, they also want additional rights, so we should give them those rights. Uh, 
Can you help us with that? Yes. So what I will say on that is that there's this narrative that has always been propagated as if all these uh, LGBT groups are formed to tell everybody that, um, you know, it's okay to be gay and we want everyone else to be gay or to try to be gay or something like that. Like one last step, it's not a preference. If it was a preference, I don't think a lot of people would like to go through all this mm. uh, discrimination and everything. If you, you can just choose and switch from being a lesbian or a gay person to being a heterosexual. A lot of people will be doing that. But, but, Unfortunately, but, it's not the case. Rosalind, sorry, that sorry with, with, that, with that, that, again, the argument, I'm saying I have to play the devil's advocate because the others are not yet on. So please bear with me if I do. But the point is, um, even in choosing a sex partner, whether same sex or whatever, so if it's two uh, uh, lesbians, it's still preferential in the sense that they would even, of the several ladies available, decide on which one particular lady they want to have any such intercourse with. And so, yes, it is preferential. Is it not? No, it's not preferential on okay. the terms of attraction. Mm. That is what we... It, if you are heterosexual, doesn't mean that you are having sex with uh, the opposite gender every day. Mm. That's not what heterosexuality is. But when it comes to LGBT, everybody seems to think that it has to do with sex. And then you demean um, people to their to their sexual intercourse, which is not the case because there are lots of lesbians and gays that choose not to have partners, that like heterosexuals that choose uh, to be single or not to have any sexual intercourse. So you can't just look at somebody and say that because they uh, they come out to say they, they identify as this or that, that means that they are having um, this kind of sex or that kind of sex. Even for heterosexuals, you can't look at a heterosexual and know exactly how they uh, behave in bed. And so this is just an infringement of people's right to privacy. If we are not, especially if we are not doing that to heterosexuals, and that is where you can even see clearly that there's so much inequality, even with with, with this, uh, different sexual orientations and gender identities. At the end of the day, even with the intersex people who are born that way, are we going to arrest the baby or arrest the parents of the baby that is born with? two different organs. Mm. And then what are we going to do if they make a wrong choice for the child and the child grows up and by puberty, uh, his puberty and his male and, and, and his female, but is left with a male organ. Mm. Like, what, what happens to these children? There are all these issues that have already been going on in the community. All the, uh, I, I've been doing this advocacy work um, professionally for about eight years, nine years now. Mm -hmm. And every time all we're talking about is the violence and discrimination that have been meted out to the uh, members of the community and even perceived persons. So let's not forget that this is even not just for LGBT people, but people who might be effeminate but are not gay, mm. who might be effeminate and married to women or having um, or attracted to women. So how are you going to uh, police people based on their forms of attraction? If somebody says I'm attracted, I'm a man, I'm attracted to women. I mean, how do you how do you judge that? How do you you know? At the end of the day, are you going to follow them until they decide to have sexual intercourse? And let's let mind you, this bill all talks about bestiality, like you were reading earlier, mm -hmm. which is nothing to do with the LGBT plus um, community. Bestiality does is, is, is I mean, LGBT plus uh, rights has to do with consent consent with consenting adults. So I don't know how even uh, the idea of bestiality came in. And that shows them, shows the ignorance they have about the, the community. And no form of engagement or um, scientific evidence was put and real reason, reasoning and rational thinking was put into this, this, this bill at all. No, and a lot of what okay. people are saying about uh, pedophilia and so on. Pedophilia has been in so much in the heterosexual community and especially incestual uh, pedophilia. And why is there no bill? Why is there not an uproar about this? If we are so concerned about our children's safety, why is it that that has not been a key issue? The rates of teenage pregnancy in so many societies, and nobody is saying anything about it. Don't we care? But rather we, we choose to uh, discriminate and write a 36-page document against a marginalized group of consenting adults. This is, this is not... Okay. Uh, All right. Um, uh, I'll come back to you, Rosalind, because uh, there are a few uh, things I noted when you were making the submission. But let me introduce now Ras Mubarak. He's former member of parliament for Kumbongo. He's joining our conversation. Ras, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Sir. Good afternoon. Right. Ras, so we are having this conversation about the uh, proposed bill uh, on anti-LGBTQ plus uh, activities and the like. And um, 
uh, I have quite a number of guests who are not very enthused about what Parliament is proposing. Uh, I saw also you had put up a write-up uh, which called out one of your own for, well, for want of a better word or expression, for holding double standards on the issue of uh, uh, homosexuality because the people he represents uh, appear to be against it or a significant number of them appear to be against it, yet uh, his submission suggested he may uh, be a bit in favor of that. So, uh, Russ, I'm sure you may have seen bits and pieces of this bill, or extracts of it at least. Um, what do you think is the rationale behind it? And really, uh, could we perhaps be taking a, a look at the concerns that have been raised so far and nuancing it? That is, even if there's need to have such a, a law in the first place? Well, um, to begin with, the uh, Honorable Member for Medina has clarified his position. Yes, he has. His position is that he's in support of the bill and that he's not against the bill before Parliament. So that has to be a in perspective. The second question, do you see rising incidences of people trying to fight you know, their perverted view of what sexuality is on the people of Ghana. Every country has its cultural norms and rules and regulations. If you go to the West, there are certain things that they can't stand. Likewise, or in like manner, and specifically Ghana, should have in its statute. if you could kindly no. reposition yourself a bit, uh, would really be grateful uh, because we are finding it difficult really making out what you're saying. Uh, but uh, still watching Opposing Views live on MX24 television. Uh, we've been discussing the issue of anti-LGBTQ+, uh, that bill, and whether or not it's a misplaced priority. We've had a lot of views so far. Uh, Ras Mubarak is a former member of parliament for Kumbungu. Uh, he also has some rather strong views on the issue, suggesting that perhaps uh, our setting does not really condone it. Um, uh, as we try to bring back Ras Mubarak uh, onto the phone line so we can continue with the conversation, I'll read just a few of your messages. Quite a number of them are here already. Uh, I'll read just a few. Owusu uh, Adepa NS says, Ghana, we have a long way to go. Uh, then he comes with the... Uh, broken heart emoji. Francisca Domitero Zinio says, and who is also supporting you, One Love? There's nothing homophobic about people expressing their distaste against the practice. One Love, it's not about how long homosexuality has been in Africa. It's been with man since the beginning, but man has always accepted it as a taboo. And that is what it is. Okay, Francisca. Uh, Francisca goes on to say a few more. Uh, there's also Vance unusual says wow so there's a banter between Vance and Francisca also on Facebook uh, for those of you who are watching perhaps you could also drop your comments there if you have views to share uh, we'll pick them up in a brief while AC and Iwa, I also see your message here as well as Olin's so we'll come to all of them in a brief while uh, but Rasmu Barak has rejoined us on phone um, Ras can you hear me now okay Ras can't hear me so I'll take a few a few more Ras can you hear me now Hello, Ras. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. Now we can yeah. hear you. So let's, let's hear okay. you. You were making so a point. As, as, as I was saying, I mean, uh, the bill is very forward-looking. It's progressive. Um, the bill is forward-looking and progressive, you say? Very, very forward-looking and progressive. I see. Um, uh, if you take a look at aspects of the bill, you know, that have been in contention by opponents, for instance, you have seen rising incidences of people, you know, trying to open up offices in the country um, that promote LGBT activities. Clearly, we can't have that in our country, you know. And prescribing laws that that that, that bring on punishment on people who openly, you know, uh, practice some of these things should not be seen as something. Uh, uh, negative. As far as I'm concerned, it is it is it is it is great. You know uh, what this does is that any pastor who, for whatever reason, decides to officiate a marriage between uh, gays and lesbians, could find would find himself in trouble. Any medical doctor 
But, but, but why why must why must a, a pastor find himself in such trouble when what the Bible says is what the Lord has put together, let no man put asunder. His is to put the two together. If they are convinced, they've prayed about it and they are convinced, be it of same sex or different sex, and they are convinced that they are meant to be together. And the pastor's job is only to make sure that before the Lord they are together. Why is he supposed to come under such scrutiny and uh, face such would you, sanctions? Would you, would, you, would you make that same argument if an armed robber came to a church and said, Pastor, I've gone to rob you know, a bank of this amount of money. I want you to pray, to pray over it. But, but that's Obviously, a different it context. It, it is not different because crime is crime. So far as there are laws that frown upon it, you can't justify it. So the issue has to do with why it is a crime. For somebody who feels strongly that, yes, I'm a lady. I feel strongly attracted to a lady. And it is our preference. We it's, say we want to be together. Why should that be a crime? If a, pervert, if a pervert feels strongly about having sex with his dog, would you say we should allow that? Because in this LGBTQI whatever, mm. there but, are... But, but with the issue of the dog and the human being, it will be on the human being infringing on the rights of the dog. In this case, there are two human beings, two individuals, who have consented to do something together what is wrong with that they, they, they are part of the community because you can't you can't you can't legislate on on some other thing as far as this whole phenomenon is concerned and, and not put in place far-reaching uh, uh measures to ensure that in the future we not having incidences in our country where pansexuals for instance are telling you that uh, they can have if somebody is a man for instance He's okay having sex with a man, with a woman, and with animals. Okay? But Russ, be... Russ, question is, there are people in the country now who are uh, married to two, three, four, five people. Uh, it is not necessarily a reflection of society for which reason everybody gets up and marries two, three, four, five people. In like manner, if one lady or one gentleman decides to marry another gentleman or lady, uh, it is not in itself something which will influence society to the extent that everybody will get up and say, because uh, Kojo, Kojo has married Yao, I also want to marry Kwesi. So, again, in the context of the community, uh, there's still a bit of a gap there. Don't you agree? I don't agree. Okay. And when this bill is passed into law, you know, uh, platforms like yours, we should allow LGBT people to come and advance their argument, mm. <laughs> you know, would 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 be inviting trouble not just for the host but probably for the present you know not just for the presenters but for the producers and everybody who's involved in making sure you know people whose activities have been criminalized are given the platform to perpetuate you know those acts of crime mm. i see so, so how so does I'm how does the law suggest or recommend for instance that persons Engaged in same-sex uh, activity in it's their not, room. It's not, it's not law yet. It's, it's a draft. No, okay, it's so, a draft. so how does this proposed law hope to identify uh, and perhaps arrest and prosecute persons who are perhaps gays and are in their rooms doing whatever? How does the law... I'm, 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 I'm surprised you're asking this question. When, when people take on crime, say mm -hmm. armed robbers, do they write boldly on their forehead that, that they are armed robbers? Mm. You only catch them in the act. So if you are, so, caught, if you are so, caught in the act. So if you are caught in the act. Mm. If you are caught in the act, the law will deal with you. If you are promoting gay, sex, bisexual, gender, pansexual, whatever, the, and you are caught, the law will deal with you. you know, mm. So if you are hiding in your room, the fact that the law hasn't caught up with you. Does not mean that you know uh, we shouldn't have laws in place that would deal with um, their activities that are society frowned upon. Mm. So, okay, hypothetical situation: uh, myself and one of the Kubolo, uh, we go for a show somewhere in Suhum. Uh, we book a hotel and room, and, and then we go into that hotel room together. Uh, we are two guys. We decide to sleep on the same bed. And then when we step out, a police officer sees me holding one love's hand and says, hey, these people are gay, and then goes ahead to make a claim. Then what happens? You are, trivi you are, tri you are trivializing, trivializing it's the a, It's a possible yeah. hypothesis, and I, I think it's and, something maybe and, we need to look into. And, and in any case, if you're not gay, 
you would have to prove you're not gay. So, so the onus lies on whoever is prosecuting to prove that the person is indeed gay. The thing is, everybody who is accused of or arrested for these activities will be taken to due, due process. And okay. I think, and I think you're jumping ahead of yourself mm. in making some of some of these. Oh, no, no, we are we are only trying to make sense of the proposed law, and so we are looking at possible scenarios and how perhaps some we're of not, these things may play out. We're not even talking about what is in the law. We should be talking about. We we have talked about it. Um, we've well, we've, after, we've done the after, first after, bit after, part. Yeah, we've done the after, first bit of the show, which highlighted after, the major uh, portions of the law. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, there are a few uh, guests of mine also who have been listening keenly to the conversation. And um, I must say that we are really grateful you, you've joined us, though. Um, uh, Rosalind Mode is a board member for the LGBTQ plus rights Ghana. She is one of our guests. Uh, one of the Kubala is an advocate uh, for LGBTQ plus rights in Ghana. He is also uh, on the line, as well as Alex Kofidonko, the director for LGBTQ plus rights in Ghana. Um, uh, maybe we could share a few words. Let's start with One Love. One Love, uh, you've had some very strong points that the MP is making. And indeed, um, some would say he's made some cogent arguments. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, One Love, Somebody I think who has been appointed to, now we can to protect... You. I find it very disappointing that somebody which has been elected to protect Ghanaian citizens is not doing their research before speaking and promoting things that will endanger one of, one of, our lives further. Sorry, before you, you move on, he's a former member of parliament and also uh, okay, members former. of parliament. So uh, they represent the constituencies. And if his constituents are firmly against something, he has every right to articulate those views. So, yes, but he yes. Should, if he should know better and then inform his constituents to also be better people. Now, for someone to say pansexuals sleep are also involved in bestiality and sleep with animals shows that he's very ignorant on the subject and he needs to go and research all these things that he's using to bring hate and danger on people's lives. He really needs to find, know what he's talking about when he's speaking. And when you ask him, I, you see that I, he's I, getting I in a strong, certain I mood. I said exception. I said pan-sexual. Pan yes, yes, yes. Pan, he did say some. I said, I said strong... He said what? He, he pan. You said pan-sexual. I, I, I wouldn't entertain... I wouldn't entertain the kind of... Uh, Russ, Russ, Russ. Just, 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 a, just, just a second, Russ. Um, as much no, as possible, no, I, we do I, not... I would not... I would not... I would not be on a platform where... You know, somebody who doesn't even know what he's doing. Rush, 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 rush. Just a second, just a second. One love, one love. Uh, so the point is that we, we are... We are Russ, Russ, just a second, please. I wouldn't have that. Russ, just a second, please. I'm saying that uh, as much as possible, we are allowed to make our points, uh, but they yes. have to be devoid of insults. Or, um, There's no insults. Yes, but but perhaps the word, the use of the word ignorance at this point may not be something we would want to um, go on. So did he, um, okay, let's go through this slowly. Did he say pansexuals are also? He said. I, I think he said some pansexuals. I think, if I heard him correctly. I've, yes, he didn't say that. He said pansexuals. Please. <laughs> okay. We can, re, can uh, later we, go we can, we can later it. check, but I, I don't... Making I don't that exactly statement what, what means that, you are that, ignorant... That, so, that, hold on. He's he still on. Don't no, worry. Russ is mind. still on. And so, at least he... If it's, that's, if it's, it's okay. If it's, if, 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 I don't know who he is, but if he's minded, there's a difference between pansexuals and transsexuals. If oh, transsexuals. Okay. Oh. So, so which one did he I talk about? Okay, which don't worry, don't worry. So, one of you make your point. Let's let's uh, leave the pansexual and transsexual argument. And okay. Then let's, so, let's, when uh -huh. you intelligently put out that scenario of how would the police now arrest some like me and you have gone into a room mm. and we have come out now? How do you prove that first of all we had gay sex in the room? How do you monitor that? He could not answer. Because they are just moving with hate and they are not thinking these things through. Are you now going to be checking every Ghanaian citizen's anus? Is that what is going to be happening in Ghana now? What if I had constipation and I released a buntui the night before? Will you say because my anus muscles have been flexed from the buntui, so now I've, I've had anal sex? So like, I, I what think, is I think this? The, clarity, the clarity the former MP gave was that usually it would require that you are caught in the act. Or perhaps there would be investigation to... And you asked him how, and he couldn't answer. 
He can't. Because there's no way unless they put video cameras in everybody's bedroom. There's no other way to catch people having their private sex in their bedroom. Mm. I see. Do, 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 do homosexuals and, 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 and all of those people not, not do some of the acts quickly? What, what do, do, we not see, do we not see, you know, uh, people of the same sex kissing publicly? This is a kind of loose argument that I've been Ras, so, so if I hear you correctly, you're saying uh, homosexuals uh, display acts of affection for one another openly, and that could it be basis. It, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be in the confines of their room. Okay, so any such act not. which is displayed, which is, is open now. That is one. If I may, okay, okay, that sure, is sure, one. sure. Go ahead. And 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 secondly, there are instances where they are required, you know, in filling a form or something, to describe their sexuality. If you were to go and fill a form and say you are gay or lesbian, obviously you would find yourself at the wrong side of, 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 of the law. And that's why I gave you the example of criminals who in their criminal activities would do it under the cover of darkness. There's no criminal who would go, up, who would go out, you know, uh, perpetrating their activities openly. Occasionally you would have some people do that. Okay? But... A lot of these acts of crime are done under the cover of darkness. Mm. Some may slip. You know, some may be bold to say, you know, they are gays or lesbians. And for which reason could find themselves at the wrong side of the law. Mm. Have we not had instances in this country where gays and lesbians have been brazen enough, you know, to hold hands and kiss publicly? Have mm. people not seen them and even taken... Okay. Video, video so, evidence. So, so of that's that. a good and clarification why, you and give. And that is why. Let me land on this. Sure. Let me land on this. A, that and that good. is why I said that whoever is arrested, perhaps he doesn't understand what due process is. Whoever is arrested would be taken through due process. Okay. Okay. okay? So it will and be thoroughly no investigated. One. So let's say someone uh, or two persons have been uh, spotted at a beach displaying uh, affection for one another, and they may be of same sex. Um, that then becomes basis for the arrest. Now, after they are arrested, uh, they will have to go through the due process. Investigations are conducted and the like uh, before such a thing can happen. Okay. Well, love, uh, does this convince you? Maybe this then suggests that, well, there's... He moved there, does it. But mm. I'm wondering, like, people who have lived in France, so, like, when two guys who have lived in France meet and they kiss each other at Alliance Francais and they meet at Osu mm. and they are kissing each other on the cheek, or when two Ghanaian men are chatting and we are holding hands and then we are doing the snap, hey, Charlie, long time, oh, Charlie, and just then putting my hand on the shoulder, walking together, oh, Charlie. Or, like, where do we... Where does it cross over to where these physical bodily contacts that we have been having from time immemorial become a gay act? I, I think and it's discretionary. Him say, I think mm -hmm. it, will be, it will be discretionary. At the, at the discretion yeah, of the discretionary. police. Discretionary. And we are in a, the police. In, in, Unless we are in perhaps a the, the, nation right. where um, some police plant marijuana on people to arrest them falsely. So why can a police then not? falsely accuse people of being gay and abuse this law. Mm. So there's, it's very okay. dangerous okay. and it's very endangering so, to so us Ghanaians. One love is saying that there's a possibility then for people to take advantage of the proposed law and target persons they may even have personal vendetta with. Well, we all, we all have to, you know, um, lend a hand and make sure that people do not abuse the law. Oh, then some will say that we don't even need the law. If really we are going to do that, and then we still need everybody to find a way to protect the law, and then we may not even necessarily need it, or? No, we, 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 we need it because we have to be each other's keeper. Mm. Okay? Mm. Are you saying that because, you know, people would commit acts of crime, for which reason we shouldn't prescribe the necessary laws that would deal with, with those kinds of crimes? I see. So the police got almost all the time ask the public to volunteer information on mm. criminal activity. Mm, that's true. Okay. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why the question is. Okay. Uh, Russ, uh, let me ask one though. There's a portion of the proposed bill which talks about persons such as myself, journalists, or yeah. anybody who may yeah. decide to use a platform like this or the internet to do Absolutely. anything which may be described as um, 
pushing the agenda in quotes, pushing the agenda. Uh, so someone may someone sitting back watching this show may find a way to suggest that ah Chen is doing this to push the agenda of LGBTQ plus persons. And so for that mere reason, I may have to face jail time. Uh, some would say uh, this uh, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to say the exact things I want to say, but really, no, say, how, how do we justify such a thing? That, that there's a law I'm, that doing, says, I'm doing a show there's, like there's, this, and there's, I've there's put... A law, there's mm -hmm. a law that says you shouldn't, you know, give your pla platform for criminals to promote their activities. And you decide to go ahead and give your platform to criminals to promote their activities. Obviously, you would uh, have fallen foul of the law and would have to face abuse. It's as simple as that. So because I'm taking the views of persons who identify as homosexual, because of that, I can face jail time? Because you are giving them a platform to promote their activities, which is illegal under our law. Mm. Would you would you give your platform to armed robbers or drug dealers, you know, to come and you know, promote or justify why they are into crime? Right. If you would not, then this question does not arise. Okay. All right, uh, thank you. Let's hear from Alex. Alex, uh, you've heard the former MP there uh, make these points. Um, do you have any questions for him? Maybe we'll take those few questions and then uh, we'll get some reactions from social media and then call it a day. Okay, <laughs> like there, there is a lot of like questions that comes up um, in the submission that he made. Now, first of all, you talked about um, the Medina MP making a comment and then he's saying that those in Medina um, that represent him there are against the expression or the comments that he made and so he has come to clarify it. Honestly, I am also coming from Medina, right? I was born right in Medina, grew up in Medina, lived most of my life in Medina and I do not ascribe to the idea of hate that is being pushed around. So are you going to dismiss me as his constituents representing me on the floor of parliament? But, but that would be right? a majority so of the constituents. That would be a majority of so, the constituents. Yeah, I understand that it is the majority of the constituents right. that he's represented. But then again, to my existence as a, a constituency member, even though I'm in the minority, should not be subjected to my existence or my existence should not be erased mm. because I am a minority within this constituency. Right. I believe that he equally represents me in sure. the con in Parliament House, sure. to which every law, any law that he is proposing there should be to the betterment and the development of all of his constituents. Everybody needs to be considered in this law. All right. Mm. So that's where I will put in that <clears throat> regard, uh, with regards to that. So... Um, he also mentioned about uh, uh, our culture and our norms and all of that. See, I don't think that we as a Ghanaian society would want to agree to the fact that because some people perceive that a certain culture norms is against homosexuality or LGBTQ persons, and for that matter, that should be the basis to which some Ghanaians will hate or antagonize other Ghanaians. If we want to go with that can, analogy, can I, then can I, I also want to... Ras, just a, okay. just a quick one. Let, let, let him land, please. Alex, please land so um, uh, Ras Mubarak yes. can respond to you. Yes. If you want to go with that analogy, then we are already, then it, it's clearly a recipe for disaster in a country where majority of the population think it is okay for them to attack and vilify and antagonize and abuse other people because they are in the majority and they think other people do not deserve to live in the society in which they are all part of. So that is it from that angle. Okay. And all we know, culture is dynamic. Mm -hmm. Culture has never been static. So okay. we should not make it seem as though culture is the over or the underlying factor to which somebody exists as a human being is placed on. Okay. And honestly, my existence as a human being, right, or a, my existence as a human being should not be the basis to which somebody would enact laws to, to, to take that life from me. I because see. our constitution guarantees each and everybody the right to life and the freedom of association and expression and all of those things, okay. to which we uphold it as a country, to which I believe that uh, uh, honorable 
is, is in even a better place to know all of these things. Okay. And one thing I will also right. say is that, Honorable, you know that this law is not even a Ghanaian law. This is not a law that was put together by Ghanaians okay. or an Alex, indigenous uh, law. No, no this is American far-right group's no, law. Uh, and Alex, they were Alex, in Ghana no, 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 in 2019. Let's, let's not go there. It's okay. Uh, but you've made no, your point. We, have, let's, well, see, we need to know the genesis don't of worry, this don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, let's let's hear from Ras Mubarak. Ras, you, you can uh, respond to a number of things that were said earlier on, please. Okay. Is that, is that Alex? Oh. Yes, that's Alex. Yes. Okay. So, Alex, uh, first of all, if the law that is a draft bill that is being put together by Ghanaians. Mm. The fact that you may find aspects of it, you know, elsewhere does not mean that it's not coming from a group of Ghanaians. Secondly, um, obviously, I believe you're a Christian, and you would know that man shall not live by bread alone, because mm -hmm. you talk about, you know, your MP concentrating on issues of development and, and, and what affects you. You know, uh, we have to uphold the, the, the culture. You know, I think currently is cultural imperialism, whether mm. you like it or not. It is something alien to us. It is something that has been pushed to Africans by the West who feel that their version of democracy is having to accept all of, all of these things. Thirdly, mm. If you really feel strongly about some of these things, then I would encourage you to run for public office. If you are opposed to what is happening in Parliament, I would encourage you, you know, to run for public office and be able to, um, you know, uh, propose for laws to be enacted. Okay. All right. Fourthly, mm -hmm. fourthly and, and very critically, right. the chiefs and opinion leaders represent the people, right? Mm -hmm. The Christian Council represents the Christian community in our country. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Muslim, you know, uh, uh, council representing Muslims in our community. Right. All of them have spoken unequivocally against the rising incidences of LGBTQI plus activities in our country, mm. and they have issued public statements in support of what uh, honorable members are attempting to do. So, you being in a minority does not mean that your views are not being taken into consideration. Right. Why? If, if, if you're hungry and you don't have a job, would you justify the fact that um, would you justify going to steal the friend for yourself? And finally, on his question, nobody has promoted hate. And I want him to quote just one aspect in the draft bill that says if somebody is LGBTI, go and beat up the person or go and burn their offices. Nobody is promoting hate against LGBTI. Mm. And that is why I emphasize time and again that persons who are accused or arrested for LGBTI plus activities would be taken through due process. That is the way we do things in a democracy. That is the way we do things in our country, you know, and it is very unfortunate that there is a subtle attempt to play victim. Oh, it is we and them, and that they are victimizing us, you know, that they are, they are abusing us. Nobody has called for any LGBTI person to be abused or victimized. Mm. And I'm surprised that these arguments are being made. I'm surprised that they are being allowed to hold without any proof. I see. Okay. Whatsoever of the, of the position that they are taking. Okay. Let's hear from Roslyn. Uh, Roslyn Mould is a board member for LGBTQ Plus Rights Ghana. Roslyn, um, do you have any questions for uh, Honorable Ras Mubarak? Um, again, he sought to clarify a lot of things and he suggested that it is not the case that the law is seeking to get people to gang up against homosexuals and beat them up once they meet them on the streets. No. It is only trying to bring some sanity into the space and allow persons uh, to go with what. Uh, should I say, our traditions uh, suggest to us something of the sort. Okay, but let's hear you. People based on their sexual orientation or gender identity for up to 10 years. They, uh, 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 that is a form of discrimination. Huge discrimination. And that, does, that is also very abusive. It could traumatize people just for being who they are, who they were born, just the way they were born. 
Mm. That is not something that is out of care or love or, or I mean, they, they, we, we should not we should, we should not try to deviate from this thing. At the end of the day, he is also comparing it to armed robbery, armed robbery and drug dealing and stuff. It's it's not with consent. If you are stealing from somebody, that is not with the consent of the person. You are talking about two consenting adults here. You are not talking about animals. You are not talking about uh, pedophilia. We are not talking about. Uh, uh, stealing from somebody or uh, you know raping or sexually harassing people we are talking about consenting adults doing something in the privacy of their room mm. and even that one it's not for everybody in the community identifying as lesbian or gay doesn't mean that you are having some kind of sex in your bedroom or you are with somebody mm. so why should people be jailed just for being who they are and this is the thing that one love is saying that it's going to increase the state of violence and discrimination against the society. Look, let's look at all the other African countries, even. There are many countries that did not even have the law in the first place, especially Francophone and neighboring Francophone countries. Has anything happened to them since they didn't have any law ever since colonization? The French did not introduce that law. Has anything happened with their population? Are they in dire trouble? What other things? I mean, this has nothing to do with anything. And how does what two consenting adults do in their bedroom affect the state of the economy or affect the rate of uh, infections of COVID-19 in our society? How, how does it affect anyone negatively in any way? To love somebody becomes a crime in this country. Why should we allow that to happen? At the end of the day, it's still very, very much discriminatory. And again, some of the treaties that some of our own presidents have signed with the UN and have agreed upon as a part of the UN, there were resolutions uh, signed since 2011, 2017, and so on. That's, the UN has clear um, resolutions on sexual orientation and gender and identity. And our presidents from time immemorial have always been party to this. So why are we pretending as if we, we, we've never been part of this. And this uh, there's a part of the bill that mentions the Gelantism and Related Offenses Act, that which prescribed the formation of groups for the furtherance of the interests of group members mm. by use of threats of violence or intimidation. Mm. How When has the LGBT community ever instigated any form of violence or intimidation? That has been coming rather from the religious rights. And we are seeing more of that with the formation of this bill. So why are, we, are, are they trying to and project their hate as if it's coming from the LGBT community. And this is what we are talking about. They, they, they also make um, some fallacious statements about helping people living with HIV AIDS and um, stating that 18.1% of, of the population are those living with HIV AIDS are from the gay community. Even if those figures are true, then what, what about the 81.9%? Aren't they heterosexuals? Why aren't we doing something about that? And why is it that staggering? 80, less than 20% of the people living with HIV AIDS in this country. And that is a bigger deal than the 81.9% of heterosexuals who are still spreading this virus. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. And that is why it is nonsensical. Okay. It should not be. Uh, this At the end of the day, we can look so many countries, even in Africa. Let's not look at the West. Are, South Africa has marriage equality. Has, are they developing or are, are their, their rate of development depreciating? Mozambique, so, so many African countries are living okay without okay. loss like this. Right. Loss like this. Okay. So, okay. Why do you think so, so, so let's, let's hear from Russ now. So Russ, yes. Okay, yeah. if, if, if I may respond to that. De right. Development is not only brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And that is why time and again, we encourage, you know, uh, the promotion of patriotism, you know, um, volunteerism mm -hmm. and other things. So when, when people talk about development, it's not only brick and mortar, it's not only roads, hospitals and, and other things. Mm. There are the, what we call the soft aspects of development. You know, promoting discipline, morality, and the rest of it. How is that? R yeah, sorry, your, your line is breaking. Uh, if you could again reposition yourself, we would really be grateful so we could hear okay, you. Okay, let's... Um, Great. Can you hear me now? Actually, we can hear you now. Yes, we can. Okay. What I was going to suggest is that if they strongly feel about the table, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say that members of the 
Um, okay. we, we, we are struggling to hear Ras Mubarak there. Um, it's rather unfortunate, but Ras Mubarak is a former member of parliament for Kumbungu. And uh, we, he's been making some strong views, though. Um, there are a few calls that, are, that have come in and a number of messages on WhatsApp. I think I want to open the phone lines now and allow people to share their views. Uh, we still have our guests on the line. If you have direct questions for them, you can also go ahead and ask them. And uh, we'll be more than happy to get those responses for you. The phone numbers are 55 one and 0204738481. Let's go to Tamale. Tamara is on the line. Tamara, hi, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Tamara, let's hear you, please. Yes, um, I've been following this discussion, even though not from the start. Right. Um, my question is, in Ghana, have there been any person who have been attacked or abused plainly? Because the person is LGBTQ+. Quite a number, actually, yeah. Yes, I know. So my point is, the advocacy, like we're all saying, mm. to be against this abuse, mm. but not to compare whatever is happening with whether economy is doing well or it's not just culturally accepted. I listen to Alex, and Alex talked about culture is dynamic. So mm. it means that we should start leaving women, men should leave women and marry men. And women to lead men and marry their colleague women. Is he saying that the language has so, so Tamara, what, 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 what essentially they are saying is that nobody is forcing anybody to do anything. However, do not tell me that I do not have the choice to go for option A or B just because you don't want option A or B. And so <laughs> it should be allowed to function. Just do your do your thing and let me do my thing. Essentially, that is the argument they have been making. They're allowing, they're allowing. That is why I said as much. They're allowing is that nobody has stopped somebody. But well, they this themselves new law, have, This new proposed law that, seeks to stop them from doing such a thing. I didn't get that. I'm saying this new proposed law seeks to criminalize acts of homosexuality. And so, uh, again, technically, it will mean that we are stopping them from doing what they feel like doing. The law is coming because we don't want to celebrate it as a nation. Okay, all right. Otherwise, those advocates are already protecting people who are in the act. Okay, thank you, Tamara. And if they are in the act, what stops them in that act? Okay, Tamara, thank you. I, I think Alex wants to respond to you. Alex, 30 seconds, so we can go to the next caller. Festus uh, is from Sydney West. He's also on the phone. Festus, you're coming in a brief... Oh, Cletus, rather. Sorry, Cletus. Uh, you're coming in a short while, but let's hear from um, uh, Alex now. Alex, brief one. Yes, the, 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 the response to culture was actually directed to um, Honorable when he said that even our culture is against that. Okay, and I'm right, telling him right. that when it comes to culture, culture is it's dynamic. dynamic. And, so and that culture even point. shouldn't be the basis to which somebody's existence as a human should be taken from him. So that okay. was the point to which I was All mentioning. right, Alex, thank you. Cletus, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Cletus, let's hear your views. Yes. Um, from the look of things, I think uh, the very group we are talking about are struggling for what we cannot comprehend. My point of view is that mm. even animals do the right thing. Animals know that it is wrong to go after a male animal. Animals don't do this kind of thing. If everyone were left to do what he or she wants, I don't think there would have been law and order. Like everybody would. There would be madness, chaos in the whole world. Gradually, where we are getting to, if we allow these things to go on, in fact, at the point, there will be no laws, laws wouldn't work. If they are talking about rights, have they been denied the right to eat? Have they been denied right to have, to have shelter? Have they been denied right to speak? But what I am yes. foreseeing is that the rights they are demanding for, it is something that does not exist. And if it happens, in fact, we, we, it, it can be. Ghana, we can't accept that kind of thing. Okay, Clare, we thank you. Totally thank we you. are copying from the British, but we cannot copy everything from the British or from the Europeans. All right. They have their culture. We have our culture. So if they want, they should go up. They should go back to Europe and practice that thing, but not in Ghana. 
Okay, Cletus, thank you. That was Cletus from Sydney West. Let's go to Wa. Um, Mankama is joining us from Wa. Mankama, good afternoon. Yes, um, um, let's hear you, sir. Um, um, good afternoon, Cletus. Listen. Right. Um, for me, my concern is that um, um, why should we compare ourselves to the foreign world? When they are having a norm there, and they, we are also having our norms and practices here, so can someone come from somewhere and come and speak for our whole country? When we are having our leaders, we are religious and moral leaders. Mm. When we follow our great grandfather upholds it, they don't like it. But with that norm, let do. Let's yeah, not do that. Okay, take and show the listen to those so called advocates who are advocating so for this to happen in our lives. Okay. You can remember so long and then what happened to them. Okay, all right. Mankama, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That's Mankama from Wa. Uh, let's go to Sablugu. Uh, Malik is joining us. Malik, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, let's um, hear you, Malik. Okay. Yeah, so what I have to say is that I think I'm totally against these people giving them that space because human existed before they got to know that we have rights. And it's not been denied. That's my other brother just said. Now, the danger is that most of these people, this thing are going to practice, they are going to resort to, you know, uh, adapting other children. Uh, Ma Malik, can you Most kindly, people. Malik, sorry, can you kindly turn down the volume of your television? All right, all right. Because all you're right. getting some Thank really you. bad feedback. Thank you very much. Most um, of them, and all right, I've done that. Right, great. Most of them end up, you know, adapting children, mm. and the danger is that they end up in, you know, training these children into this thing. So you are going to have in the next five years, our society is going to be poised with these people all over. I see. This thing we are saying, we think we are just denying them a few things. My brother, trust me, mm. if they allow these people to operate as they sought to do, they are going to infiltrate every corner of the country, and that is how we do. Okay, Malik, Already thank they you. have their source of funding from outside. <laughs> Malik, so, thank you. Um, if you say, but I, 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 I'm a bit worried when we say these people. They are brothers and sisters, except that you don't seem to subscribe to their views on certain things. But it doesn't make them, it doesn't make it a me versus them situation. We are one people. So um, the these people arguments, hopefully we can uh, tone that down a bit. Uh, Aziz is joining us from Gushegu. Aziz, let's hear you. Uh, the thing is that mm. uh, I'm talking to the lady. She said uh, the uh, white people, like their economy and a whole lot. They are UN. Let me ask this. Uh, Saudi Arabia not part of UN. Eh? Is Saudi Arabia not part of UN? You, make, make a point. Eh? She, she, her, her, point is, her, point is, her point is this. And, so if, um, if you would Saudi allow me. Arabia Aziz, just a second. UN, Aziz. And they don't take LGBTQ. Aziz, uh, what, what um, Rosalind had mentioned was that the focus is not so much on preference, sexual preference or sexual rights per se. Now, it is on other things which will contribute to the growth and development of a country. And her point was, how does a country criminalizing homosexuality improve on uh, the country's management of, say, COVID-19 or management of the economics to suggest that maybe the dollar is now one CD to one dollar? Something of the sort. That is her argument. And so we should not major in the minors. Let's focus on that which we need to focus on. And not so much on things that do not require so much of our attention like this. But of course, you make your point. Okay. So, like the way they are saying, these countries, they are developed. Mm. So we can't be comparing uh, ourselves to them. And moreover, this thing, more, moreover, some of them, they don't believe in spirituality. Okay. But you know that some things are there. It comes with a lot of spiritual backing. 
Okay. When you are into this, it will get you into trouble. Okay. So why why should we even accept it at the first place? Okay, Aziz, thank you for yeah. your thoughts. That's Aziz from Gushego. Let's go to thirty seven. Farouk is joining us. Farouk, good afternoon. Hello, my name is Francis. Oh Francis, Francis, sorry. Francis, yeah. let's hear you please. Yeah, yeah. I think we are actually uh, discussing a very nice topic this afternoon. But my, my first question to them is, I want to find out, is any of them married? Those who are against the law, is any of them married? That's my first question. Okay, kindly hold on. And we have three, three guests on the line, so maybe we'll start okay. with one love. I know one love has a number of children. Uh, one love, are you married? Uh, caller wants to know. Oh, one love is off. Okay, Rosalind, how about you? And then Alex, maybe you are next after Rosalind. Uh, I don't know where this question is coming from or how it has anything to do with the law. So okay. uh, I would Okay, you you defer that. that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Alex, do you care to answer to that question by the caller? Yeah, I think I would equally go with um, Rosalind's analogy. Okay. That's fine. Um, that the conversation is not about money. It's not relevant. It's about money. Okay. So, uh, uh, so Francis, next, yes. My next question, I want to find out, do they have children? Uh, is there by any way, have they by any way given birth? Okay, I think uh, they would uh, go back to the same answer. Uh, the same answer. It, it has not got much to do with the, the topic at hand, has it? That's, that's what exactly this law is all about. Okay. That's what exactly this law is all about. Mm. You see, when somebody has gotten the means of bringing you to life, and you feel like, okay, as I have come, nobody should come again. You see, mm. you too, you too, you are also infringing on somebody's right, which you are supposed to bring onto this earth. You are saying that now, when my mom and my <laughs> parents have brought me to this life, I have not going to <laughs> allow anybody <laughs> to come again. <laughs> so you should also ask yourself, are you also aware that you're also infringing on somebody's right? So preventing somebody also from coming, that's also what you're also doing. <laughs> that's what you also do to somebody. Okay. When you feel like... Uh, uh, how now, do on somebody's right? Not to have children. Okay. Um, right. I would like to ask the caller, please, because um, at the end of the day, there are a lot of heterosexual couples that choose not to have children. There are a lot of heterosexual couples that are unable to have children, mm -hmm. maybe out of old age or out of reproductive issues. And are we saying that uh, because of that, they are less human or they are less Ghanaian or they are, they, they, they are, I don't know how this, what this man means. And I feel like there, a lot of people. Have you have access to that, that. Right. and you That's are fine. saying because of what you feel, what of because of your right, you are not going to do it. That's what is the issue. Okay, is. all right. That's fine, Francis. Thank you. <laughs> that was Francis from Thirty Seven. Um, there are a few messages on WhatsApp uh, and also on the Facebook. Uh, channel at mx24gh that's the handle mx24gh i'll share a few and then we can hear from alex also uh, there are still a few calls coming through uh alex is joining us from northeast region let's pick him first and then go to our dashboard on facebook for some comments alex uh good afternoon Hello. thanks for joining us yeah good afternoon my let's... name is alex from northeast region right let's hear you alex yeah uh, i also want to contribute and my contribution is i, I want to know if whether we know the reason why God created Adam and Eve, but not Adam and Adam alone. If we are saying we, we should allow homosexuality and lesbianism and male to male, female to female, what do we call God? Because God taught it very wise and said, Adam should not live alone, but Adam should have an opposite sex. That is that not just of that the is not the general uh, so Ghana we shouldn't allow those things to be happening if those things are going to be happening the peace we are having we shouldn't forget that it's God that gives the peace to us if we are going to compare ourselves to the western countries and other countries that are practicing those things and their economics is very good we are going to hurt ourselves one day because there are things that are happening in the western countries that are not happening in Ghana okay we have right. been hearing a lot of things, fighting in Western countries and other things. But Ghana, we are peaceful. So because of those things, if we allow those things to happen in this country, many things are going to run into the young ones that are yet to grow up. We are all young and we are yet to grow up. We are going to give birth. And many things are going to happen. So I don't think those things are necessary for us to tolerate them in Ghana yet. Okay. Thank all you right. very much. Alex, thank you so much for your call. Uh, we'll pick a final call. 
Uh, in fact, okay, no more calls, I'm told. Um, so I'm going to give the last word to both Alex and Roslyn. Uh, kindly indulge me. Let me read a few messages from our viewers because they've been sending them for quite a while now. So I would just like to read a few of them. Um, let's come here. Advance Unusual says you, okay. Uh, there's a banter on Facebook. I don't know what's going on, but there's a serious banter over the same issue. Uh, Olin's Yao Preku model says, hey, blow job the dead they say. Okay, uh, Olin's. Uh, and he is making reference to a provision in the, in the proposed bill which uh, criminalizes things such as blow jobs and the like and the use of sex toys, even in heterosexual relationships. Gertrude Omari says, ask that girl to change her name to Kofi. Uh, okay, so I said, I think you are referring to who, Rosalind, that, okay. <laughs> I don't know where that is coming from, though. Uh, one, they should, again, from Gertrude Omari says, they should remember that they can never, 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 and never change God, the creator of this world, no matter how they do. Why don't they stop the oxygen they take in? Okay, Gertrude, thank you for your comments. Uh, Jake Adombre <laughs> says, so far, uh, so far as I feel distasteful to portions of the bill, Chen uh, kindly ask one love if he slept with his colleague man to give birth to those his beautiful children. Tell them to return the money they took from the gay community. The bill will be passed if they go ahead to bleed profusely. Okay. Um, I, I'm not aware one love or any of the other persons you've been speaking to has taken any money. I seriously doubt they have. Um, I want to believe they are persons of integrity. Just as yourself, you are a person of integrity uh, sharing these comments. Uh, Gertrude Omari uh, sent another message. See you. So why do you go and get spams from the opposite sex to get pregnant? Uh, madness on some people thinking they are wise that, wiser than God, the creator of all this world. Okay. As much as possible, we try not to uh, say things that are offensive to one another. So please. Uh, Francesca Domitiru Zinel says, you see the problem? Rights must, must be pursue to the end. I think that's what you're trying to say. Pursue to the end. If it is your right for any sexual preference, then they should have no desire for children or procreation because by their sexual preference, procreation is not possible. Okay. Uh, AC Eniwa says, uh, not this man that was physically and emotionally abusing his wife uh, have an opinion about care people. LOL. Uh, is abusing your spouse a Ghanaian value? Disgusting. Okay. So I think you are making reference to the issue of Ras Mubarak. He's come out to deny those allegations and uh, we've not heard a lot more about it. So I, I would really hope that you don't even delve into that. Uh, do armed robbers have an association which have come out to say we want to be recognized? Okay. I guess this was in relation to a question I had asked uh, to I had asked of the former MP. Vance Onuja says, like, did I hear the former minister or former member of parliament rather Comparing armed robbers to homosexuals? Like, really? Okay. Frida Kobia says, you can never alter or change anything about those people, be it genetically, psychologically, mentally, or biologically. So after the 10 years, what then? They come out to West, Western because you can't take nature out of a person in the name of reformation. Imagine being deprived of sex for your entire life. Just imagine that. Those people can't even have an erection, even in the midst of 10 naked girls. You think someone should wish to be hated when he or she can actually stop this act okay i think it goes on to say uh, a few more uh, frida again says so basically religious people see this act as uh, oh sorry i think i may have missed it uh, see this okay i think i may have lost it sorry uh sc battel says how can you make such compare such comparison uh, between robbery and same sex. So robbery crimes and same sex crimes. Seems some legislators do not make their arguments clear. Uh, Frida says it's funny how this guy gets the air front to call out people as being emotional when this whole bill is based on emotions, hate, religious sentiments, and bogus bigotry. Well, media, I wish it is passed. They shouldn't even change anything. They should just pass it so that God will open the heaven gate for Ghana to be blessed like Europe, USA, and others. God hates LGBTQ people. So certainly when we criminalize it, he will be pleased to bless us. Uh, so that we don't go and borrow money from countries that support and even protect LGBTQ plus um, people to pay salaries of government workers in this country. So uh, I get the pun there. Um, okay, quite a number of messages. I'm, I'm not sure we'll be able to read all of them. And so uh, we would have to end it here. But I'll take 
two comments. In fact, I'll take brief comments uh, from um, Alex Kofidonko and Roslyn. Let's start first with Alex. Alex, uh, 30 seconds, please. We've run out of time. 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So um, one thing I would want to say, because Francis made a comment about like children, right? And honestly, as a society, we are here and then there is a lot of like street children, mm. like walking on the streets with no basic uh, amenities afforded to them. So if, if our, indeed our focus is on children, I would admonish that we concentrate on the already ones that are existing mm. to which they are not even provided basic amenities to live even as humans. Let's provide those services for them. Let's treat children walking on the streets even as, as late as um, 12 and 1 a.m. Let's provide services for them. Those lying on the street with okay. no uh, 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 shelter to, to, to cover them. Let's All provide right. services from them. Okay. Otherwise, then it is only coming from a place of subjecting the, the LGBT community to disrepute. And honestly, there are LGBTQ people who have children. And um, childbirth is not limited to heterosexuals alone. Okay, and the fact right. that somebody is an LGBTQ person doesn't make the person important. Okay. The idea of childbirth is as a result of choice. That choice is being given to everyone to choose whether to want to have children or not to have children. Okay. And so let, let's look at it from that angle. Okay, thank and you, so the last thing that I would want to say right. here is that let's be careful as a nation not to divide ourselves and discriminate against ourselves. LGBTQ persons, we all know, if you're going to be honest, have existed with us all over society. What we are seeing is the constant abuse of LGBTQ persons. And we keep saying this and we are being dismissed. There were video evidence of abuses that goes on okay. every day. Right, there were, there sure. were others without video evidence. We are talking about this. Right. Let us tell you the abuses and the challenges okay. we are going through. All right. And let's find solutions to all of this challenge. Great. Thank you, Alex. Uh, let's hear from Rosalind now. Rosalind, uh, 30 seconds, please. Thank you. Um, I would like to address this rhetoric about Adam and Eve and God and all that, that is based on personal beliefs, which people have the right to believe, but it's not based on fact. That is not how man was made. That is a personal religious belief. And so they should stop using that as a basis to discriminate against other people. Okay. Ghana is not a Christian country, all like right. I'll state again. At the end of the day, I also like to mention that all these countries that we do borrow the money from, a lot of our MPs visit countries in the West and have seen how they live their lives with LGBT people free from criminalization. Mm. And that has not caused any form of uh, worry to anybody there. Rather, it has brought better livelihoods, um, enhanced um, more diversity in, in society, where we have people like Ellen DeGeneres contributing to society. Right. And even being honored by Barack Obama, the president of Ghana, for, her, even, uh, for coming out as a lesbian uh, within the entertainment industry. We have so many other... Uh, you know, renowned people in the music industry, in the creative industry all over the world. Even some um, um, have tried to stand up for the presidential race in America, in so many other countries. Um, and, and that happened with the last election, even, right. where we had the first gay man to stand for the presidential race. And this is a country that is developing in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Just because they don't criminalize it doesn't uh, do anything to anybody. Okay. And so we have to be careful about how right. uh, we deal with this issue. Okay. And not take it from a personal level All right. or an emotional level. Thank you so much, Roslyn. Uh, my guests for today have been Roslyn Mould, uh, a board member with the LGBTQ Plus Rights Ghana uh, Humanist International. Uh, also, one of the Kubola, an advocate and LGBTQ Plus Rights in Ghana. And Alex Kofi Donko, director, LGBTQ Plus Rights in Ghana. We were also joined uh, on phone by Ras Mubarak, member of parliament for Kumbungu. Uh, Reverend Opunifimpo did join us, but uh, had to go off uh, subsequently because he had stepped into uh, a different session. Um, but thank you for watching this rather extended version of the show. Two hours it has been and it's come by so quickly. But we are thank thankful to you that you took time off to watch uh, today's uh, edition of Opposing Views right here on MX24 television. Uh, my name is Kobna Chen Chenibuati. The show was produced by uh, Marie France Fodger with support from NSN Anudovlo as well as Juna LED. Many thanks for watching. Unique, contemporary, engaging. 
Introducing the ultimate talk show that captures, scrutinizes, and stirs up conversations around relevant content across the globe. We talk to the 